Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Fall of the Rest and welcome back to my apocalypse. Paladin Dance was maybe one of the best introductions to a Fallout faction that I've ever seen, with his rugged, harsh nature displaying the Brotherhood's attitude towards the Commonwealth. But as we progress through the main storyline and get to know the Brotherhood of Steel and Paladin Dance a little better, we find out that he's much more than just a soldier of the Brotherhood of Steel. Today we will be going through his origins, his relationships, his own quests, and how he ends up at the end of the game. This is the complete storyline of Paladin Dance. But before we get into the video, I have another addition to the channel I would like to share with you all. I run an Instagram page dedicated to Fallout content and updates to this channel. If you have enjoyed my content so far, then please make your way over to Instagram and follow my account. The link will be in the description below. So without any further delays, let's get into the video. Dance was not born to the Brotherhood of Steel, which is usually required of someone to be a member. He was a scavenger that sold scrap alongside his friend Cutler, who he met at Little Lamplight alongside McCready. Cutler and Dance got lucky one day and were around when Brotherhood members came around for a recruiting run in Rivet City. Dance and Cutler were given the opportunity to prove themselves worthy to the leadership of the Brotherhood of Steel under Elder Owen Lyons meaning that he has been under the command of three elders in his lifetime, Elder Owen Lyons, Elder Sarah Lyons, which is his daughter, and of course, Elder Arthur Maxim. Once Paladin Dance had proved himself and was able to join as a combatant, his sponsor was a man by the name of Paladin Krieg. While Dance did not understand why at the time, until the sole survivor points it out, Paladin Krieg had been extra tough on Dance compared to his peers, because he believed Dance had untapped potential. Despite the profound belief in Dance, Paladin Krieg might have underestimated him, because in 2277, Paladin Dance was given the rank of Paladin and leadership of his own squad at the age of 21, an astounding feat. Not as impressive as Maxon's rise to Elder at 16, but that's a story for another video. Alongside this new promotion, Paladin Dance left the command of Paladin Krieg and was put on separate assignments. However, terrible news would strike Dance after the Battle of Adams Air Force Base, which was the deciding factor of the war between the Enclave and the Brotherhood of Steel in the Capital Wasteland. Paladin Dance had not been at the battle, but Paladin Krieg was. Many unfortunately died during the battle, and Krieg was one of them. Relationships between the Brotherhood of Steel members were more than just militaristic and professional. They were also emotional and sentimental, which is why when Dance heard about Krieg's death, he grieved profusely, but just like he was taught, he bottled it up and decided to honor the sacrifice his former superior made and continued the mission of the Brotherhood of Steel. By 2282, the Pridwin was operational and under the command of Arthur Maxon. Dance was granted a position on the Pridwin. Lucky for him, his old friend Cutler, who is now a knight, had been given the same position. In 2283, Cutler had gone missing during a routine scouting operation. These disappearances were common and seen as not worth looking into, but even then, Dance still had hope for his friend and was granted permission to investigate the matter. When Paladin Dance and the rest of his team found the remains of Cutler's squad, they were all unsurprised but still devastated. However, there was no sign of Cutler. They soon discovered that they were ambushed by super mutants. Cutler's life had been spared, but not his humanity. Mike Cutler had been exposed to the FEV virus, and by the time Dance had found him, he was already a complete super mutant. Dance did the only thing he can do to cure a person of the FEV virus, and executed the hive alongside Cutler. After Elder Owen Lyons' death, two things would also die in the Brotherhood of Steel on the East Coast. First would be his daughter, after she took leadership of the Brotherhood of Steel, and second would be the philanthropic nature of the East Coast. Under Elder Maxon, most members of the Brotherhood of Steel adopted an authoritarian outlook on the world. Soon the outcasts would reunite with the Brotherhood, making the Brotherhood of Steel on the East Coast much larger. With the Brotherhood now all sharing these new perceptions, Paladin Dance gained the admiration of Elder Maxon and was soon about to gain a task that would soon change the Brotherhood of Steel forever. Paladin Dance will be put in charge of Recon Squad Gladius, which was sent to the Commonwealth in 2286. Their mission was to recover technology like any good Brotherhood team would, and the investigation or possible saving of the previous squad, Recon Squad Artemis. There were two previous teams dispatched to the Commonwealth by the East Coast Brotherhood before the events of Fallout 4. The first squad couldn't have been more successful. They recovered technical documents galore and more familiar technology for the Brotherhood to use. The second team, however, and the following sentence is a quote from Paladin Dance, would not be so lucky. As soon as the team entered the Commonwealth, they would lose a few members automatically, alongside the loss of the power armor, supplies, and the radio communications. Here's a short audio tape from one of the battles that Recon Squad Artemis had to go through. Scuttle the armor. We can't let them have it. Fire him! Damn it! Aspen set the self-destructs. Ferris, fall back. 
We'll head for the old military base, then try to make it to our holdout. The code will be our call sign. All right, move, move, move! The Brotherhood of Steel would not hear what happened to them until the sole survivor stepped in. Back to Dance. His team would have difficulties dealing with the new wasteland, just like with the last squad members of his team would lose vital equipment to their mission, such as Night King's power armor. Recon Squad Gladius discovered the Cambridge Police Station, establishing it as a base of operations, and a temporary home until the mission was completed. Scribe Halen, one of the few members who would end up surviving for the entirety of the mission, would identify the Corvega assembly plant as a place of interest. They would soon identify the large raider presence and were aware of the risks, but Paladin Dance ordered the assault anyway. During the attack, a knight by the name of Warwick would be critically injured and unable to fight, along with the Knight Branch during the retreat when he stepped on a mine. Unfortunately, Knight Warwick's condition resulted in internal bleeding and paralysis, with a low recovery chance. Upon hearing this, Paladin Dance would make the hardest decision he's ever made. Paladin Dance ordered Scribe Halen to euthanize Warwick by a lethal injection. After Knight Warwick's pronounced dead, Scribe Halen would simply stare at Dance for what felt like an eternity, and then she would start sobbing and fell into his arms. Then he proceeded to simply hold her. This is another example of how the community of the Brotherhood of Steel is more than just an army, but it's kind of like a family in a way. Sure, it's corny, but that's really the only way I could place it. She then kissed Dance and said thank you. Dance would then stand there speechless and confused, wondering if he pushed her too far and began to think about his time with Paladin Krieg. Dance would then realize that deaths from his team were his fault and that he is to blame for it. He would then carry that burden for the rest of his life. Paladin Dance would then venture further into the Commonwealth, down by the airport, and Fort Strong. He wanted to take these places for resupplying and the Brotherhood later on, but he discovered the ghouls in the airport and the super mutants that infested Fort Strong. He was extra bothered by the mutants because of his reminder of Cutler and the stockpile of mini nukes underneath Fort Strong. Even though the super mutants outnumber the squad, they decided to fight for the fort, but it clearly wasn't going to work and did not work. For just approaching on the fort, another death happened, being Knight Sergeant Dawes. Once they returned to the police station, the squad would begin to detect a strange signal that they could not identify. They only knew it was post-war and near Nearby. As the sole survivor is exploring the Commonwealth for the first time, eventually coming across Cambridge, a new frequency will appear on the sole survivor's pit boy, the A595 military frequency. Tuning in, we hear automated message repeating. Describe Halen of Reconnaissance Squad Gladius to any unit in transmission range. Authorization ARCS, Farum, 9-5. Our unit has sustained casualties, and we're running low on supplies. We're requesting support or evac from our position at Cambridge Police Station. Automated message repeating. It sounds like someone is in trouble. As we race down, we notice a battle of laser weapons and not so smooth skins. We see a man in power armor in the middle of a fight, taking most of the damage. A woman with a laser pistol, not heavily armored, but appears to be a medic. Behind her is an injured and enraged man with some sort of military uniform on. But he looks like a jerk, so we don't care about him. After the fight, we can approach and speak to the man in power armor. Going through his dialogue, he wants us to help him obtain a transmitter to send a message to his superiors. After we finish the mission and hand him the transmitter, he decides to have a conversation with us. Smoother? I thought we did fine. That sweep was sloppy. We were caught unprepared more than once, which is unacceptable. However, your extra gun gave us the edge we needed. I'm not certain I could have accomplished the mission alone. I thought we worked well as a team. Agreed. It's a refreshing change to work with a civilian who can follow orders properly. That being said, I believe we have two important matters to discuss. First and foremost, if you'll hand me the deep range transmitter, I'd like to compensate you for your assistance during this operation. I think you'll find this weapon useful. It's my own personal modification of the standard Brotherhood laser rifle. May it serve you well in battle. In whatever dialogue we go through, we obtain the Righteous Authority laser rifle. This rifle is a modified issue Brotherhood rifle and Dance's personal primary weapon. He then offers us another reward. Thank you. You're welcome, civilian. Now, as far as the second matter goes, I wanted to make you a proposal. We had a lot thrown at us back there. Our op could have ended in disaster, but you kept your cool and handled it like a soldier. There's no doubt in my mind that you've got what it takes. The way I see it, you've got a choice. You could spend the rest of your life wandering from place to place, trading an extra hand for a meager reward. Or, you could join the Brotherhood of Steel and make your mark on the world. So, what do you say? 
but to continue his story, we must join the Brotherhood of Steel. I'd be honored to join. That's what I wanted to hear. After completing a few more main quests, we finally see the arrival of the Pridwin, and we can continue the Brotherhood questline. Paladin Dance takes us aboard the Pridwin, and we can become a knight with a fancy new suit of power armor. We then join him at the place he wanted to take, but couldn't at his lowest, Fort Strong. And afterwards, we can converse with him again. In choosing the Brotherhood to help take down the Institute, you are then instructed by Elder Maxon to assist Proctor Ingram in rebuilding the American, patriotic, commie-hating giant, Liberty Prime. Liberty Prime has two main weapons, his head laser and his nuke pack. Specifically, these are Mark 28 nuclear warheads that he throws like footballs. It's enough to make a grown man cry, and that is okay. The problem is the Brotherhood owns none but Proctor Ingram knew where to acquire them, sending the Soul Survivor and Paladin Dance to an old military base in the Glowing Sea. But before that, we meet Halen for more information. She tells us that the Glowing Sea messes with radio transmissions and that we have to use a special radio transmitter. When the Soul Survivor and Dance locate the bombs, Paladin Dance says he will protect the payloads. Paladin Dance receives a message from Halen, saying that the Brotherhood is after him and that they know he's a synth. Paladin Dance is confused. He knows he's not a synth. He has been with the Brotherhood for years, and has disassembled countless Gen 1s and 2s during his time in the Commonwealth. But he trusts her, and confirms it on the radio transmitter. All Brotherhood of Steel personnel are to shoot Paladin Dance on sight. Paladin Dance is a confirmed synth and traitor, under the name M797. Repeat, shoot Paladin Dance on sight for treason. He is completely dumbfounded, and makes a run for it, but eventually the Soul Survivor is commanded by Elder Maxon to hunt down Paladin Dance and execute him. Before the Soul Survivor learns where Dance is, Scribe Halen asks for mercy on Dance's behalf. The Soul Survivor finds Dance at Listening Post Bravo. This was the location that Dance and his squad were to fall back on if they were overrun and needed shelter. After destroying the defenses, the Soul Survivor would approach Paladin Dance. We have the choice to follow Elder Maxon's orders or spare his life. While we don't know what happens for sure, to continue learning about Paladin Dance and what happens to him, we are going to spare his life. Dying is the coward's way out. You're right. How could I have been so blind? I can't run away from what I am. To find peace, I need to face the fact that I'm my own worst enemy, and live with the consequences. Perhaps now that you've opened my eyes, I can consider my next move. Whatever you decide to do, I've got your back. Thank you, my friend. But I have my own path to follow. The only clear choice is for me to leave the Commonwealth. The sooner I make for the border, the sooner I put this behind me. Take my holotags. Use them to prove that your mission was a success, or Maxim will just send someone else to hunt me down. Now, come on, let's get the hell out of here. But as we enter the elevator and rise to the surface, we hear a vertebrate land. Exiting the building, alongside Dance, we see Maxon with a stern look and a question in his mind. It's not his fault, it's mine. I'll deal with you in a moment. Knight, why has this, this thing not been destroyed? I refuse because your orders are ridiculous. How dare you? Dance isn't a man. It's a machine. An automaton created by the Institute. It wasn't born from the womb of a loving mother. It was grown within the cold confines of a laboratory. Flesh is flesh. Machine is machine. The two were never meant to intertwine. By attempting to play God, the Institute has taken the sanctity of human life and corrupted it beyond measure. After all I've done for the Brotherhood. All the blood I've spilled in our name. How can you say that about You're me? the physical embodiment of what we hate most. Technology that's gone too far. Look around you, Dance. Look at the scorched earth and the bones that litter the wasteland. Millions, perhaps even billions, died because science outpaced man's restraint. They called it a new frontier and pushing the envelope, completely disregarding the repercussions. Can't you see the same thing is happening again? You're a single bomb in an arsenal of thousands, preparing to lay waste to what's left of mankind. That's insane. He dedicated his life to protecting mankind. Is that what it told you? How can you trust the word of a machine that thinks it's alive? A machine that's had its mind erased, its thoughts programmed, its very soul manufactured. Those ethics that it's striving to champion aren't even its own. They were artificially inserted in an attempt to have it blend into society. It's true. I was built within the confines of a laboratory. And some of my memories aren't my own. But when I saw my brothers dying at my feet, I felt sorrow. When I defeated an enemy of the Brotherhood, I felt pride. And when I heard your speech about saving the Commonwealth, 
I felt hope. Don't you understand? I thought I was human, Arthur. From the moment I was taken in by the Brotherhood, I've done absolutely nothing to betray your trust, and I never will. It's too late for that now. The Institute has foolishly chosen to grant you life. You simply should not exist. I don't intend to debate this any longer. My orders stand. It's all right. We did our best. You convinced me that I was wrong to be ashamed of my true identity, and I thank you for it. Whatever you decide, know that I'm going to my grave with no anger and no regrets. Touching. Either you execute Dance, or I will, Knight. The choice is yours. We are presented with the same choice we had inside. Follow your orders, or spare Dance's life. But we can ask the Elder to carry out the order for us. For the good of the Brotherhood, he needs to die. But I won't pull the trigger myself. I'm disappointed in you, Knight. Stand aside. Just make it. Disgusting machine. Let this serve as an example to the Institute. you weren't able to carry out Dance's execution on your own. But this time, we will stand up for Dance well, and against Maxim. Whether he's human or not, Dance saved the lives of countless Brotherhood soldiers. Now it's time you saved his. You're a stubborn man. So, it appears we've arrived at an impasse. Allowing Dance to live undermines everything the Brotherhood stands for. Yet you insist that he remains alive, which leaves me with only a single alternative. Dance, as far as I'm concerned, you're dead. You were pursued and slain by this Brotherhood Knight, and your remains were incinerated. From this day forward, you are forbidden to set foot on the Pridwin, or speak to anyone from the Brotherhood of Steel. Should you choose to ignore me, know you'll be fired upon immediately. Do we understand each other? I do. Thank you for believing in me, Arthur. Don't mistake my mercy for acceptance. The only reason you're still alive is because of him. I'm returning to the Pridwin Knight. Take some time. Say your goodbyes. And then I expect to see you there. We still have the Institute to deal with. We then saved Dance's life. After some time leaving him to get settled in his new home of the listing post, we return to find he is equipped with a suit of X-01 power armor, that he sports quite well, and is ready for more adventures. From here, you can then finish Dance's requirements to achieve his companion perk, called Know Your Enemy, which grants a permanent 20% damage bonus to synths, feral ghouls, and super mutants, a great perk for any player to own. So ends the story of Paladin Dance, a man who started as a humble scrapper, an early paladin, a squad leader between two wastelands only to be left behind by the Brotherhood when they find out his true identity, but just as many throughout the Commonwealth was shown mercy by the sole survivor. Thank you all so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video and I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe if you aren't already, and ring the bell for more Fallout related content. Like I said before, I have an Instagram page of which I am becoming more active on, so go check my page out in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching, God bless America, and God bless you.